Aubrey, what is your love language? My love language, I think words of affirmation and acts of service. I love when someone does something nice for me and it can be very practical. Like you do the dishes, you clean the kitchen and I feel so loved. <laughs> but also right? I need those words of affirmation, right? For someone to tell me they care about me and are grateful for what I'm doing. Like I need to hear it. I need to hear the words. <laughs> recognition, verbal yeah. recognition. Totally. Yeah. What about um, you? Um, <laughs> that, that surprised me. <laughs> um, honestly, receiving gifts. I love getting presents. And I know that's one of my love languages because that's how I show love. Totally. Um, and that's that's um something to think about, guys. Like, if you're not sure what your love language is, which we'll explain in a second, and we'll also teach you how you can use these ideas on IELTS with real speaking examples, but um, if you're not sure what your love language is, think about how you show love. That's really like the best sign. I I love making things for people. I love, I just love giving presents to people. I always have. <laughs> it's true. And you're right. It's often the way you show love is often also the way you want to receive love, but right. sometimes not, right? It can true. be really tricky when the way you give love, you want to receive it. So you have to really think about that. And it's, I think it's different for every person and it takes a little bit of soul searching. Definitely. So guys, uh, we're going to briefly explain the five love languages. Um, this is, this has been a topic of conversation, um, for so long. Like this has been in the zeitgeist for, for years at this point, it is a more modern concept, right? Um, I'm not sure when the book about this was written or when this became popular, but it is a more, um, sort of modern convention, right? As a way to strengthen relationships and get to know yourself and the people around you um, even better. So um, we will explain the five love languages and then we'll give you some examples for IELTS speaking. So the first one, Aubrey already mentioned words of affirmation, which basically like compliments. Could we sum it up by saying compliments? Yes, exactly. Right. Compliments and recognition. Recognition. Yeah, yeah for sure. Right. The reason what inspired this episode today actually was I was reading some of our reviews of the IELTS Energy podcast and I felt it uh, like boosting my love language, right? I'm like, oh, these words of affirmation, this recognition. I want to read a couple actually. Oh, Donia yeah, awesome. Sarkoli from the UK said of the IELTS Energy podcast, the best podcast I've ever listened to with a big heart. Like, it just wow. my heart. I know, right? Of oh my God. I think this is my love language too because I am very, very happy right it. now. <laughs> Yes. And another one, the the name was the French El Paso from France. I love that. I they love said, that name, by the way. <laughs> I know. It's often like some crazy, interesting online name. I love it. It sounds and like they, a gangster name. It, it sounds like something I would see in like Ocean's, you know, 14, whatever the next movie would be from Ocean's 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, it sounds like that would be yeah, like, just oh, we're them take as down the French, French El Paso. El Paso. Yes. Totally. They said, so useful. This is what I have looked for for many years. Real wow. American conversation. Awesome. And both of those, I mean, all of the reviews I read, I feel that, right? Those words of affirmation, the recognition for the hard work we're putting into, the planning we're putting into it is yeah. so validating. I feel that, right? So for some people, maybe words of affirmation are, are not as strong of their love language for me and you, it sounds like it is. So thank you for the reviews, guys. I appreciate it. Um, please leave us some more reviews. Uh, wherever you listen to this podcast, guys, leave us a review for the podcast. And um, you can ask us an IELTS question in there too. And uh, we might give you a shout out in the future and say your name, uh, like French El Paso. I can't get that out of my head Amazing. now. That's like my favorite name. Um, all right. So words of affirmation. Compliments, yes, but mostly uh, recognition, right? I I do very much appreciate and and yearn for people to just verbally recognize 
Yes. How hard I work in in every aspect, you know, if it's like being a mom or a friend or family member, like all the effort you put into life, it's great to have it recognized by other yes. people. And <gasps> most of us think it, right? We think these wonderful things about other people we notice, but if we don't say it out loud, how are they ever going to know, right? Especially True. if their word, their love language is words of affirmation. Like all True. of us need to be a little more cognizant of that, of like, I need to tell this person, I recognize the hard work they're putting in. I recognize recognize what a great mom they are like you, Jessica. You got to say it, right? You got to say it. Totally. Um, and the next one, acts of service. So this sounds like a grand, like I have to open a soup kitchen type deal, but it's it's not as grand. Actually, it's the small stuff that means so much. So acts of service. I think you mentioned this at the beginning. It could be like doing the dishes. It's like any yeah. anything big or small you're doing to um, help another person where you you take your own time and effort to do something, right? Like with your hands to do something in the world that helps another person. Yes. To lift their burden, right? If it's something yeah. they would have had to do and you do it for them, some people right. feel so much love from that, from that act of service. So yeah, it's, yeah. that's a big one. Whatever. Um, like I, I so James is, he's 12 now. He turned 12 this week. It's very, it's mm -hmm. getting to be so old, but you know, um, it's hard for kids to think outside themselves a lot because as parents, we do all the acts of service. That's our job. We right. do all the things, but once in a while, you know, this kid really just takes it upon himself and he'll, um, do something around that. Like he'll like put the dishes away or he'll like do some chore. And I'm always so surprised and pleased and grateful when that happens. And like, I'm always shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you thought to do that. But yes, acts of service definitely help people feel loved for sure. Um, quality time. Now, I think this might be a phrase you guys are familiar with. How would we define quality time? Yeah, any meaningful time you're spending someone, it can just be a conversation where you're really listening, spending that time to get to know someone, to listen to someone, or, you know, going out for drinks for happy hour when you're making that effort to spend time with someone. A lot of people, that is how they feel loved when you're taking that time to spend time with yeah. them. One of my daughters, this is absolutely her love language. She needs that time. So I have to, and it can't be in a big group often for some people, like it needs to be that one on one quality time. Yeah, it really is um, having the, the space to be fully present with the one person, right? right? So it's not really like watching TV together or no. stuff like that. Like um, if James and I play a game together, right? Then we're like, we're laughing and we're talking and like that's quality time. Absolutely. Well. Um, all right. Receiving gifts. This is kind of a no brainer. This is obvious when people give you stuff, but it doesn't have to be, you know, diamond rings. It could be like a pretty um, rock I found that's shaped like a heart and I thought of you and I'm giving it to you. It could be like, like any big or small like thing, but it's a tangible thing that you're giving to someone. Um, yeah. Physical touch is the last one. And, um, this is one of my love languages too. I am very, I'm so affectionate. I'm just like a very affectionate, like a physically affectionate person. I am always hugging James. I am like friends. I'm just like grabbing their arms. Like I'm very like um, physically affectionate with people. Is this one of your love languages? No, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm much more prickly than you. <laughs> I know, which is like, difficult no. because some of my kids, it is theirs, right? So I have to be very um, aware of that. Like I have one son every morning comes and like snuggles and cuddles in bed. And if he doesn't oh. have a good like 10, 15 minutes of snuggle time in the morning, he will be a monster. All day. Like, it's so grumpy because he needs oh that gosh. to feel loved. To feel... Yeah. And so I, you know, so have to cute. be present there and recognize he needs, and it's not like I hate it. I love it too, but I don't yeah. seek it out like some people right. do. Right. So that's, it's interesting The people in your life, if you're aware of their love, love language, it's going to make such a difference if you can kind of push yourself to show them love that way, even if it wouldn't come naturally normally. All right, guys. So all very interesting stuff, but how will this help us on the exam? So in speaking part one, you could be asked about your favorite food, restaurant, what you like to do with friends, favorite sport, how you spend your free time. These are all very common part one questions, and you could work in these ideas in your answer. So Aubrey, what's an example of using um, 
the ideas today in one yeah. of those answers. For example, if you're asked about your hobbies or how you spend free time, you might say, honestly, when I have spare time, I try to do something nice for a family member because for many of them, their love language is acts of service. Nice. So yeah, if you throw in the love language, which one it is, you can give more details for sure, but it can be about your love language or someone else's and why what you do is motivated by that. Totally. Totally. I love it. Um, what a smart way to work in such a high level modern idea with great vocabulary. You know, I just, I totally. love this. This would go so far um, for not just your vocab score, but your fluency score. Being able to put together and express ideas in this way is very impressive. Um, all right. So when Aubrey and I were coming up with ideas, for how to use this stuff on the test. I just, I just went off <laughs> imagining it. like the perfect grandparents. I don't have any grandparents left. Um, and I'm just like imagining what super cute old grandparents might be like. So anyway, if in speaking part two, you are asked to describe an older person you admire, um, I came up with an example for that. So I'm going to dive in and then um, Aubrey's going to share with you another couple speaking part three questions that you mm. could answer with love languages. And hopefully, guys, you will practice those after the show. So um, you could say, all right, I admire my grandma, Billie Jean. <laughs> I don't know why I said Such that. Such a good name. grandma name. I admire my grandma, French El Paso. Um, <laughs> her. <laughs> Oh gosh. Her and my grandpa have been married for over 50 years. They really inspire me because they're still so in love. One of my grandma's uh, love languages is receiving gifts. Uh, I hope you know about love languages. I've been reading about them lately and I am fascinated and frankly, kind of obsessed with this idea right now. Anyway, so even though my grandpa's love language is, I guess, acts of service, maybe he does love when my grandma cooks dinner for him. So even though their love languages are different, they try to show their affection and devotion for each other in the way it will be received best. Like my grandpa still brings my grandma flowers just like randomly. He'll pick them on a morning walk and bring her a whole spring bouquet of wildflowers. Oh, I love this so much. And it's <laughs> such a good point where speaking part two, you could spend almost the full two minutes if you're describing a person talking about their love language and how you show them love, how you like that. Is, totally. There's so much rich detail there to talk exactly. about. It's, this is going to be the most useful in speaking part two, where you've got to fill those two minutes. Yeah. Yes, describe them. Yes, tell a story and share their love language. Um, because you can't really talk about someone's love languages without giving examples, you exactly. know? So like Aubrey said, like it does lend itself so easily to providing really strong details. So let's give our students some homework. What are some peaking, peaking, what are some speaking part three questions they can practice? Okay. Here's a couple. And you guys want to come up with a good answer for both. First, why is it difficult for adults to make new friends? So think about what I was saying with me and my child. Like if your love languages are different, that can be a real barrier. So totally. I would love to hear the answers you come up with there. Or what is the secret to a happy marriage? Absolutely. Right. Finding out what each other's love language is. Come back to YouTube guys and leave a comment on this YouTube video with your answers. I would love to hear them. Actually, leave it in a review, guys. Even better. We're, yes, wherever you're listening right now, um, we're almost done, right? So right after we sign off today, guys, leave us a review for this podcast wherever you're listening, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen, guys, we will find your review and hopefully give you a shout out next week. So leave us a review, guys. Um, we love, we're, we, we are words of affirmation, people. <laughs> Yes, we really are. <laughs> so I can't wait to, wait to read your reviews. All right, Aubrey, uh, you have a great rest of the day. You too. See you next time. Bye. Bye.